Hello everyone and welcome to the Project Management Prepcast. I am your instructor, Cornelius Fechner. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a few of those things that eh, didn't go as planned when I recorded the Project Management Prepcast. Yes, this is a bloopers episode in which you can laugh at all the things that just went wrong. It's just like my cat sitting here suddenly and showing up on the video with me. Hey Sterling, say hello to everyone. Let us begin with the organizational theory in which we look at the types of organizations that exist. We want to explore what types of structure you can give to a company because the structure, the organization of the company defines how humans interact in it and they also define then how projects are managed from an organizational point of view. So the three basic structures that we know in an organization are functional, matrix and projectized. And why did they not come up one by one? Heaven! So much for the first part of human resources theory. In the second part, we will be looking at uh, motivation. We will look at theory X, Y and Z. And we also discussed that you can just... <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Project Management Prepcast. I am your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. In this episode, we are going to look a at There is another important point to remember, and that is how the pros the details of what exactly needs to be done in order to deliver the result of the work packages are not described in the WBS but in the WBS dictionary. This WD the, the, the WDNS, WDNS dictionary. Wonderful. There are many ways in which you can relate requirements to the deliverables for each stage of the system life cycle. Here is a simple... Here are a few more thoughts about the WBS for you. The WBS and the WBS Dictionary are both part of the Project Scope Staceline. Staceline. Wonderful. Now let's take another look at that bright orange sticky tape in the airplane. Have you ever flown in an airplane where you saw any of that tape left anywhere? Probably not, because each of these stickies represent a change request. And these change requests are our second output. And guess... <coughs> oh, God. Ugh. <clears throat> and guess who's coughing? And because that is really all there is to say about it, we're already moving on to the outputs of the control scope process. There are five of them. We have the work performance measurements, the updates to the organizational process assets, we have change requests, we have updates to the project management plan, and we have also updates to the project documents and I should have moved the thing forward so that you could actually see it on the screen. <sighs> so, 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 so. And here is what we do in detail in these six processes. It all begins with define activities. That is the process of identifying the specific actions that need to be performed in order to produce the project deliverables. 
Then we move on to sequence activities, the process of identifying and documenting relationships among the project adjectives. Adjectives? Did I just say project adjectives? Oh, God. <laughs> constraints and assumptions. The PMI defines constraints as the state, quality, or... Or what? Now that we know which risks can potentially and also substantially affect our project, you know, the high ones, we can deal with just this smaller li ri list. Wrist. And here is the most important question for you. According to the PIMBOK guide, what is the absolute best, greatest, unsurpassed and supremest tool and technique to show variances of either your cost baseline or your schedule baseline against the actual performance. What might that be? <coughs> <coughs> oh, that's a perfect moment to get a coughing fit. Oh, grandiose. Uh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little backstage pass that gave you a little bit of an insight of the production of the Project Management Prepcast. Until next time.